the squat was a big one because I wasn't at Westside at the time. I was still in college competing and it was right after interesting meet with this because it was um Toledo Open, I believe it was. And it was the first meet after a short bodybuilding gig that I did a few years. And I went from 242 to 275. And so I put on a lot of muscle in the three years that I was bodybuilding. And it was the first time that Louis saw me back on the platform. Keep in mind that, you know, Louis was helping me in the warm up room when I was a 13 year old kid. So it's, I don't want to say that we had a relationship back then. It was just more like one guy helping another kid in a warm up room and not really knowing. But after a while, you kind of begin to recognize the same people that are in the same meets and because you're doing them so often. <clears throat> so he recognized that I was back on the platform after not being there for a while. Because he came up to me in the beginning of the meet and said, holy cow, you put some muscle on. What have you been doing? And it's this bodybuilding gig and this kind of shit. <clears throat> and that's when he started kind of putting his thoughts in my head of, you need to come to Westside. You need to, you know, drive up on the weekend and stuff like that. So it was during my squat. The I, I don't know what attempt it was. But one of them was just a fucking wreck. <clears throat> and then the second one, he was back spotting me for some reason and then told me to, I don't know the exact words, I was push my belly against the belt or it was something, but it clicked. And then I, 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 I braced is what I did. And holy cow, my squad never felt like that before in my life. And at that point I was, I was sold. I'm like this, whoever this dude is, I need to start driving to um, to learn from him. And the, and the moral of the story was that same meet, I ended up totaling, oh man, like 10, 10 pounds less than I did at 242. So needless to say, I wasn't really happy in the warm up room when Louie came up to me. I, I told him, I don't understand this. I don't get this. My whole training cycle was shit compared to what it was before. Everything felt heavy as fuck. I'm way class heavier. I got way more muscle. I don't understand what the hell's going on. You know, what I can do for five reps is fucking more than I, I than I did in the meet. You know, it's I, I'm so freaking confused from this. And he's trying to explain all this to me <clears throat> from that. So I don't know if that, an that doesn't answer the question that he asked, but that answers the question about that technical aspect. Now, where the biggest technique changes that I think that we had to make were with my bench. Because at that, the meet I did after two meets, two meets after three meets, shortly before I came to Westside, I tore my pack off. So it was the 10 in came out the humerus and it had to be screwed back in. So that was, as soon as I moved, graduated from college, I moved to Columbus, my, within the first week, I had the surgery to put the tendon back in the pec. And then that was, so my first local trips to West Side, cause I was coming up on weekends, I was in a sling. And then there was after coming back from that, I had a lot of problems with um, repetitive scar tissue popping and tearing in that pec. Where at first you just, you know, the natural thought is, oh shit, I just tore the pec again. And then, you know, after <clears throat> seeing the doctors several times that I did this, I just kind of realized, okay, this, this is, this is going to suck. Cause it was, some of it was restraining the muscle, but most of it was just scar tissue getting torn away. Cause it wasn't, Lena. Anyhow, once all that kind of got worked out to a degree, I wasn't there. There were certain positions I was not able to lock out in because of the way the pec healed. And the tendon was 
fixed, but the muscle still has, you know, a giant hole in it. So long story short, we probably spent an hour one Tuesday because we had extra workouts that we'd sometimes do on Tuesdays and Thursdays of feeder workouts or recovery workouts, whatever you want to call them. Just working on my bench groove or bench technique bar path per se to try to take out as much peck as we possibly could. So I, all I remember is the goal was we just want to make this a shoulder rotation and tricep extension and remove everything else that we can possibly remove from it and put all the load on the triceps to be able to do that. Once we figured this out, I should say he figured this out because it's me as I'm just the guinea pig laying there. Like, where do you feel it? Where do you feel it? Where do you feel it? No, I don't feel it. Then, it, you know, it ended up being a thumbless grip wide wide thumbless grip, you know, tucking hard, pushing in a straight line, you know, bringing it a little bit lower, all these other factors. That was the biggest shift in any of the lifts. Now my squat had to go from a close to a wide stance, but, and that took a little bit of time, but that, that wasn't anywhere near that actually felt once the strength picked back up to where it was supposed to be, that was 100% the right move because I was way stronger and it shortened my bar path tremendously being able to do that. That was the right move. This other one was a move just to try to get the stress off a muscle that was probably never going to work right again. And there's probably nerve issues and other things that are associated with that and almost creating a brand new exercise out of an exercise that would still be a legal lift. That, that was the biggest technique change by far. And it, it, it worked. I mean, it, it helped my bench. You know, I, yeah, I'm just talking in 